Are you having a good day? My day is going pretty well so far. Now my question, can the statement, my day is going pretty well so far, be objectively true? Can it be true in the sense that anybody who thinks that it's not the case that my day is going pretty well so far, be mistaken? If so, what is required for the statement that my day is going pretty well so far to be objectively true? In his book, Ethics, Inventing Right and Wrong, J.L. Mackey provides us with a definition of good. He wrote that to call something good is to say that it is, quote, such as to satisfy requirements, etc., of the kind in question, end quote. On this account, there's a fact of the matter as to whether something is, as he says, such as to satisfy requirements of the kind in question. Consequently, there's a fact of the matter as to whether something can be good. But what does this mean? Let's start with this. What are the so-called requirements? Well, Mackey lists two general types of requirements. One type of requirement comes from wants or interests, or desires in a broad sense. For example, some of the requirements for a knife is that it satisfies the desires of those who use a knife of that type for its standard use. A bread knife allows one to easily cut through a loaf of bread. The other type of requirements are intrinsic requirements. They require that the object of evaluation have a certain type of objective intrinsic prescriptivity. For example, what makes rape or breaking a promise wrong? On some accounts, it's because it violates intrinsic requirements on how to treat other people. An act of a particular type is immoral. Let's look at these objective intrinsic requirements a bit more closely. Mackey writes, quote, someone who uses the concept of objective moral value will suppose that there are requirements which simply are there in the nature of things without being the requirements of any person or body of persons, even God, end quote. Mackey also argued, as I discussed in the first video in this series, that all such claims are false. Objective intrinsic prescriptive properties aren't real. So no claim that something is intrinsically right or wrong in this sense can be true. Nothing can have an objective intrinsic property if objective intrinsic properties don't exist. So if we eliminate objective intrinsic prescriptive properties on the grounds that they don't exist, then we're left with wants and interests, providing the only requirements of the kind in question that do exist. Let's look at an example of how something can be good in virtue of satisfying wants and desires. Philosophers since Plato, for some reason, have liked to talk about good knives. On Mackey's account, a good knife is a knife that has those properties that tend to serve the wants and interests of people who use knives of that type for their standard purpose. There are, in fact, different kinds of knives, bread knives, butter knives, pocket knives, hunting knives. What makes a knife a good knife of its type is that it has those properties that would allow it to easily satisfy the desires of those who use a knife of that type as they are typically used. Each type of knife serves a different set of desires. Consequently, what makes something a good bread knife may make it a poor hunting knife. Just to repeat, a good knife is a knife that has those properties that would satisfy the desires of people who use a knife of that type for its standard purpose. The same can be said for a good guard dog, a good play, a good game on television last night. Did you see it? In Mackey's words, quote, once we have said fully enough what an A is supposed to do, a good A will simply be an A which is such as to be able to do that, end quote. This explanation also helps us to understand the phrase of the kind in question. On this matter, Mackey writes, quote, requirements, etc., of the kind in question is vague, deliberately so. This general definition covers different uses of the word good. It leaves room for interest to be fed in, in different ways, in different sorts of cases, end quote. 
there are lots of different kinds of goodness. Each different kind of goodness relates objects of evaluation to a different set of requirements, or more specifically, to a different set of wants and interests. Consider the difference between a good meal and a meal that's good for you. Each evaluation relates the meal to a different set of desires. A good meal relates the experience of eating the meal, and not just its taste and quantity, but its presentation, the environment, and it relates these to the desires of the person experiencing it. Whereas the claim that a meal is good for you relates the same meal to questions of nutrition and long-term health and can totally ignore matters of taste or quantity. As this example makes clear, something can be good in one sense and not so good in another. These considerations also apply to statements about what an agent should or should not do. Consider these statements. You should stop by the store and pick up something for supper on your way home. While you're there, you should also pick up some cigarettes, though you really should stop smoking. And whatever you do, you shouldn't leave the store without paying for whatever it is you decide to get. In the first sentence, we're relating the object of evaluation to the desires regarding what you want to do when you get home. We're assuming that you'll want to eat and that there's nothing in the house that will satisfy your desire for something to eat, as well as what you will get from the store. The second proposition relates the object of evaluation, and what we're evaluating here is the act of stopping by the store on the way home, to your desire to smoke. Note that this relates the object of evaluation to a different set of desires relative to the first one. What will satisfy the desire to smoke will not satisfy the desire for something to eat when you get home. And what will satisfy the desire for something to eat will not satisfy the desire to smoke. Of course, in saying that you should pick up some cigarettes, we're ignoring many of your future desires, desires that may be thwarted by your smoking. These are the desires we include when we say that you should give up smoking. What desires are the speaker referring to when the speaker says you shouldn't leave the store without paying for whatever it is you decide to get? We've discussed an account that says that moral claims don't relate objects of evaluation to any desires, that they report objective intrinsic prescriptivity, which is why, according to Mackey, all moral claims are false. Let's put that question aside for a while and focus on the first three examples. These three examples are enough to show that many claims about what an agent should do can be understood in terms of whether the action would fulfill, or is such as would fulfill, the desires in question, and that different should statements relate the object of evaluation, the action, to different desires. So when we make an evaluative statement that relates the object of evaluation to a set of desires, how do we determine which wants and interests are relevant? To answer that question, let's look at how we solve a very similar kind of problem. Imagine that you and I go to a restaurant for a meal. We get done, we leave, and I suddenly say, I left my wallet on the table. Of all of the billions of tables on earth, and perhaps others not on earth, how do we determine which table is the table? You know it. From the context, the rules for understanding English allows you to infer which table I'm referring to when I say I left my wallet on the table. It has to be the table where we were just eating. The original question was, how do we determine which wants and interests are, in Mackey's terms, the kind in question? Well, it's the same way we determine which table is the table in question when I say that I left my wallet on the table. We know it from the context. If I were to ask if this presentation is any good, the relevant desires would be those that are relevant to this presentation. Is it accurate? Is it interesting? Does it communicate the ideas it aims to teach clearly? In the same way we know which presentation counts as this presentation, we know the wants and interests relevant to its evaluation. The last point that I want to make here concerning which desires are relevant in evaluating something is to note that the desires may be the desires of a group. We've already seen this in the discussion of a good knife. A good knife is such as to satisfy the desires 
of those who use a knife of that type for its standard purpose. And so far as we're talking about the standard meaning of the term good knife, these do not refer to the desires of any specific person. Similarly, a good family vacation isn't such as to fulfill the desires of any one person, but is one that is such as to fulfill the desires of all of those who are going to participate in the vacation, the whole family. So, are you having a good day? Does your day have those qualities that are such as to satisfy the desires in question? Now, what are the relevant desires in question? Well, they would be your desires, of course. Is the day going in such a way so as to satisfy your desires? Are you having a good day? There's a fact of the matter. It's a fact that's determined by knowing what it is that you desire and what is true of the day and whether there is a match between what is true of the day and what it is you desire. No day can be objectively intrinsically good. It can only be good relative to some set of desires. And I hope it is my sincere desire that you are having a good day.